Good morning. Hi, everybody. Sorry I started a little late today. I uh, was having some technical difficulties, which is not uncommon in my life all the time, but cheers. Got some nice cold brew here, like every morning. Um, I'm Brittany. I'm um, here with you again to have another Create Career Conversations with Create California. And I'm so excited today because I am talking to Ashley Lukaveshki, who is an illustrator, um, an incredibly accomplished illustrator, and um, just a really cool human. I, um, I don't know her personally yet, but with all my little um, stalking and researching I've done online, um, I want to be uh, I want to be this woman's friend already. So I haven't even had her on yet. And I hope I'm not scaring her away. But Ashley, I think you're cool already. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna be talking with Ashley today, and I'm just gonna wait until. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna do the thing that I used to forget to do in the beginning, which is to um, pin sign the pledge. So I'm pinning in the profile um, the comments right now. To. Uh, Sorry, my phone's still broken, so I can only see part of the screen. <laughs> okay, so at the bottom, I just I just pinned um, sign the pledge at createca.org. So the whole reason why we do these chats, the whole reason why Create California even exists, um, is so that we can get arts education uh, back in the schools and actually have a fully comprehensive uh, arts education in the schools to even begin with, which is um, what is supposed to be happening. It is mandated by law, uh, but right now um, in California schools, only 12% of schools uh, actually have a comprehensive arts education, as everyone is mandated to do, mandated to do but only 12% have it. So. Uh, one easy, actionable, quick thing that everybody can do um, in addition to watching our chats and uh, educating yourself about the education system um, and, and every other great thing that Create California does is uh, you can go to createca.org and uh, right on the front page is a, um, is a pledge and you just sign it. It takes like 15 seconds and, um, and then there, there you go. And then we, uh, we get one, one signature, one person closer to having arts education in, in all of our schools. Um, so yeah, at the end of this chat, again, I have it pinned at the bottom there of the, of the profile. Uh, just go to createca.org and sign the pledge. I already did. I'm, uh, I'm wearing my Hercules shirt today. I got inspired because Ashley's an illustrator. And so these are illustrations. And I also just like any excuse to wear my Hercules t-shirt. So <laughs> there we go. Uh, so yeah, Ashley uh, can sign on whenever she wants. I, whoo, part of the technical difficulties was my little stand for my phone. It was just not cooperating this morning. Um, or maybe I can request Ashley. Let's try that. I don't know if I can do that, actually. Oh, there we go. Okay. Just waiting. Just the internet. Taking a second. Hi. Hi, Ashley. Nice to meet you. I'm like weirdly um, nervous. I never go on lives. Oh my gosh. No. Well, that's okay. I'm weirdly nervous like all the time. So you're in good company. <laughs> also, how do you how do you like keep your phone up? Mine is propped on a plant and a yoga block, like right in the center of it right now. I love it. That's usually what I used to do. Um, but I finally, one of my friends for Christmas got me this little, here, I'll show, I'll, it'll take me an hour now to get it back on. But it's like this little gimbal. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's supposed to be sitting up, but it's not. And so it took me like a solid five minutes to figure it out earlier, um, which is why I was late today because of this thing that's supposed to help. But yeah, I know, super professional, my thing that made me five minutes late. <laughs> but oh gosh, there it goes. Sorry. Oh no. See. All right, there it is. Yay, it works. Okay. Uh, yeah, everything's good now. And I say that also to warn you that because it's very precarious, it might all just like tumble down in five minutes. So we'll see. Good to know. It's very uh, putting a because I'm an actor and putting auditions on tape at home before I had there's like any fancy stands. Like the setups that I would have in my living room were like ten books and then like a puzzle board game and then a stuffed animal holding up a camera and I was just like. It, I do this too much to be having this set up all the time. So I, uh, I, feel, you, I feel your pain right now. I'm glad you figured it out. <laughs> yeah, well, it took me like 10 years, but I figured it out. <laughs> um, well, thank you for chatting with us today. 
Um, this is really exciting. You will first, I have to say, so Ashley is uh, Lukaszewski, right? Lukashevsky. So Lukashevsky! <laughs> I asked like you got the end part correct, but then it's like the whole center consonants got. Oh, wait. Correct. No, I did know that because I looked at it and my boyfriend or my fiance, God, I still say boyfriend sometimes, um, speaks some Russian. And I was like, I think this is a Russian last name. I was like, can you pronounce this for me? And he pronounced it. And I was like, okay, okay, let me just check with her real quick. And I still said it wrong. I, I appreciate you trying, though. I appreciate like the um, the multiple check-ins. Thanks. I, it, I appreciate your appreciation of my multiple check-ins. I think I, I think I was so nervous about saying it. I think I switched the sh in the v. Uh -huh. So Ashley Lus Lukashevsky, yes, who hails from Honolulu, Hawaii. Yes, I can say that at least. Uh, that's an easy one. Um, and there's only thirteen letters in the Hawaiian alphabet, right? That's a, that's a fun little linguistic fact, um, but has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Um, so uh, Ashley is an illustrator, and your most recent book is R Anti Racist Baby, right? Mm -hmm. Which just made number one on the New York Times um, children's list. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, um, super super exciting. That's amazing. And you illustrated it along with the author, uh, Ibram X. Kendi, who is a professor at Boston University, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm, from, I'm from Massachusetts originally, and I love, I love Boston. I've spent so much time there, and BU's such a great school. Yeah, um, he just took that position, too. So oh, did he? Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. How did you guys, uh, how did you and Ibram get connected to, uh, to make this book together? Um, well, the publisher, which is Coquila, it's an imprint of um, Penguin Random House that focuses on very progressive um, stories for young people. Um, they first reached out to me and his name was connected to it. And he was still working on the manuscript at the time. Cool. But I saw his name and I was like, oh, my God, obviously, yes. Um, I really love and appreciate his work. And so it's kind of a no brainer for me to jump on. And so, yeah, it was all facilitated through the publisher. Um, and the process was just like very open and free and um, yeah, pretty straightforward. <laughs> That's awesome. Because you, um, you've, you've worked with Penguin before. Mm -hmm. um, they've been your publisher for, I brought it up on the, the, um, the, pocket, the pa pocket Change Collective series. Yeah. Is, is, that, is that the name of your series of books that you've illustrated? Yeah, so it's not my series, but it's a series um, written by different activists and artists um, that is published also by Penguin Young Readers. And I think it's called, yeah, Penguin Workshop. And cool. yeah, so they each have different authors. And so it's amazing people like Alok Manon and Kimberly Drew and Adam Eli. And so they're really writing these guides for young people who want to explore more about um, being in the art world as a person of color, being um, really open and explorative with their gender identity and just like understanding these worlds that um, these different artists have played such a huge role in, but kind of translating that for a younger audience. So I got That's to do awesome. really cool portraits of the people. And um, so are all these, the, all these covers then are your, are your art, your, your mm -hmm. illustrations, right? Let me um, yeah. flip it around on my computer really quick. I don't know if you, how well people can see it, but these are some concrete kids taking on the plastics crisis. Oh, that's good. The new queer conscience, imaginary borders, beyond the, the gender binary. And uh, this is what I know about art. I love it. These are such beautiful illustrations too. Thank you. And this process was really collaborative with the authors because it was really like how they wanted to be represented on the covers of their books. You know, and so there's a lot of back and forth and like playing around with what colors they like, what flowers they like, all that stuff. Oh, my, that must have been so fun for you, too, to, to collaborate with them on that level and like yeah. represent them. I mean, both of these, like with um, anti racist Baby and the Pocket Change Collective is really exciting just because I appreciate and like have heard of all of the authors and like already had fo been following their work. And so like in the case of like Alok, you know, I've like drawn them for fun. Like I, I got their chat book a few years ago and really loved their poetry and like doodled them for fun. Oh my God. People to see it kind of come full circle and, you know, actually do this for work. That's so cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my God. I love that so much. And I love too that, that these are books for children and about like making children aware of, I mean, you cannot, you obviously say it much better than me, but aware of art and aware of like all the different backgrounds and different identities and, and however you, you find yourself in the world that you can be an artist or you can be 
uh, I'm assuming the, the taking on the plastics crisis has to do with the environmental crisis, is the environmental crisis. And um, I love how I, I have not read these books yet myself. I've just been staring at these covers, but um, it's showing kids that you can be anyone and you can identify as anyone and you can also do anything with that. Um, and I love that because because uh, obviously why we're here today talking about Create California um, is because of the, the lack of arts education in California schools and um, that lack of arts education specifically, um, it's, it's specifically an, an equity issue. And there's certain um, uh, communities that are underserved even more. Like California is generally underserved and then certain communities are even more underserved on top of that. Um, and then, and I love, I love that you're doing this. Um, did you have, uh, did you have a good arts education growing up? So you were born in Honolulu. Were you raised in Hawaii as well? Yeah, I was born and raised in Honolulu. I went to public school, so I was 18. And that's like, that's something that I think about a lot. Like, I did not have access to good arts education. I had yeah. a few amazing art teachers who were working with what they had, but yeah. with like arts funding or as to different artistic mediums that was like extremely limited remember when yeah. i was in middle school we didn't have art at all and then when i was in high school we um we didn't have like theater we didn't have like you know any any kind of yeah aside from band and then we also i had photography one year and then it got cut <laughs> really <laughs> Yeah, and so there was just, like, a very, very limited amount of access to, like, understanding things like digital art, like, the kind of field that I work in now. Yeah. I think about, like, how more, how much um, faster I would have realized that this is something I love to do had I been presented with just, like, the knowledge that it exists. Yeah. You know? That's, yeah. And, yeah, and I was really lucky to have, like, gotten scholarships to go to, like, an outside art program in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. The Honolulu Academy of Arts has like amazing art classes for kids and I went to those and that really helped me to like foster my artistic yeah. abilities and like um, being able to like know that you know there are different kinds of mediums that don't exist just like you know pencil yeah. and paper like, in school and so yeah. um, I was really lucky to have that, but you know, when it comes to most kids who are just going to public school in Hawaii, that's still a very limited. Um, yeah, and that's the thing is, is with so many careers, especially careers in the arts, they're so competitive. And so you have to really start young and, and not even start young, but like you said, be aware of its literal existence. Um, I mean, like act, acting, I obviously like with digital art, that's something that a lot of people don't know about. But like with acting, I've known acting was a thing forever because I have, you know, I watch movies and I happen to have parents that supported me going to acting classes. And there was like theater in my schools um, growing up. And so because of that, I started acting so young. And naturally that just like helped me be a working actor even younger. And I can't imagine like, not even knowing that it exists and then all of these years go by and you're like oh i could have been working on this thing mm -hmm. um and how it just naturally puts people at a disadvantage um i mean it's the problem with a lot of things is people are naturally being put at dis disadvantages and uh that's why education is so important um but yeah i'm just saying about that i know i was just talking last week to um greg crayola simpkins mm -hmm. the the street artist and he was saying the same thing about digital art um, is mm -hmm. like knowing about its existence because that's also a big part of what he does now. And that's just a big part of the art world too. I mean, I guess like Pixar, right? Would like, would Pixar movies be digital art as well? Would yeah, that be the same I thing or is that different? I really thought though that I wanted to be an animator. I think, <laughs> I think about that now, like I still don't want to be an animator because I am extremely type B and like, I don't have the patience to like carry oh, yeah. for an extremely long time. Um, <laughs> I can even imagine. But just like, I mean, I, I first got into... I, I drew and painted like my whole life, just yeah. like, hanging around and my mom um, would draw with me as a kid. But, you know, growing up, especially, especially growing up as someone who like didn't have a lot of money growing up, you know, like you think that you have to have this like very serious mm. job in order to make something of yourself. Yeah. And I didn't even know what that job was going to be, but I was like, well, I can't, I can't study art because artists can't make money. And mm. Um, I won't be able to support myself and I won't be able to help my family. And I was like in this delusion 
that was taught to me. That is yeah, not your academic. fault. Yeah, like a lot of people um, perpetuate this idea that like there aren't, there isn't money in the arts and you can't make a career out of it. And I was just, and there was no one to tell me otherwise. Yep. No. Exactly. And, um, so I ended up going to college and studied international relations. Not that that leads to a great paying job either. <laughs> but, um, I was like, I need to study something serious. I need to do research and I need to like do something like very yeah normal. You could have been a spy. I could have. <laughs> I could lead to that. Government, so that wouldn't have worked, you know. <laughs> um, not trying to play into imperialism. But yeah, so that didn't end up working for me either because of my politics. And um, then my senior year of college, I took a graphic design course where we were doing like oh digital illustration. And I was like, oh my God, this is so easy for me. And everything else has been so hard. Yeah. <laughs> I used to like write these long research essays and I was just like not good at it. But I would just like stay up all night in the library thinking that this is the way that my brain had to work. When in reality, mm. like there was this whole other world that I could, you know, really flourish in that I just didn't know existed. And from then on, I like moved into the arts world and slowly learned, taught myself things and became an illustrator. Yeah, that's part of the problem with, um, with a lot of educational systems is that it, it values um, certain fields over others. And arts are, are, are worth just as much as the sciences and um, anything on that side of things. And also, like, get, it's been proven that getting an art, even if you don't want to go into the arts, even if you do want to go into the sciences or, or something else, um, getting an arts education automatically makes you a better student in history, English, science, all of those other more, like, standard classes. Um, and then, of course, if you're one of the millions and millions of kids, probably more than that around the world, that want to go into the arts, like, you have to be shown... Cause yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I was going to go into personally about people being like, oh, acting's not a real career. Um, but it is, and being an illustrator, being an artist is a real career and that needs to be taught from when, um, from you're really young. And even in California, I know that you grew up in, in Hawaii, I'm, but in California, what, what we're doing with Create California, um, it's so silly that kids would have the idea that the arts isn't a viable profession to go into because currently there's like 2.7 million jobs um uh, in the in california that are in the arts like it's very very much something that you can make a living and make money while doing something that you love and it's too bad that kids have to think that that's not um a possibility and um and i love that your art like literally specifically your is that like with the pocket challenge oh, sorry pocket challenge pocket, I, I, I just like changing collective i'm the one having a challenge right now um i i love that your books i mean that must have having did, did having that experience like not knowing that art was an option when you were a kid um would you say that that inspired you with illustrating these books and these books about awareness and um would, would you would did, does that kind of that must have inspired you right yeah definitely i mean yeah, something that excites me so much about these books is that, especially with Pocket Change Collective and like Kimberly mm -hmm. Drew's book, is that they tell kids who otherwise might not have access to anyone talking about art as yeah, a yeah, yeah. color and like that this is a viable career path. Sorry, there's, no a, there's a lot of stuff going on. Going on. Oh, no worries. I couldn't um, get my puppy. My James had to bring my puppy on a walk before this because she just wouldn't calm down. So no worries. Um, but yeah, otherwise, some kids like might not have access to anyone talking about um, arts as a viable career option. And yeah. so to be able to put these books into the world that say, actually, you, you have the power to tell the story that only you can, you have the mm -hmm. power to tell art about that, you have the power to write about that, sing about that, you know, create movies about that, whatever your, your um, medium is. Uh, I think it's just so powerful because otherwise they might, because of the lack of arts funding and yeah. the lack of focus on arts in public education, they might not have access to anyone talking about that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. On your Instagram, um, I don't have it up in front of me right now, but it's uh, in your bio, it says um, uh, mixed queer illustrator uh, for the something about the future. And yeah. would you say that like, has that being queer, being a mixed race woman, being a woman um, on top of all those things, has that uh, been a challenge for you as an artist? Have people like told you you can't do something because of any of those things or are things still getting better now? 
I think like because I'm half white and I benefit a lot from white adjacency, I have mm -hmm. that issue. And that's a privilege that I have. And mm -hmm. um, my mom's side of the family is from Korea, but my dad is um, a white guy born in the US and that yes. like, you know, passes on a lot of privilege. And yes. so I, I don't think I've really um, had to deal with the brunt of those things, but I know a lot of people in my community have. Yeah. And yeah, I think also now there's such a focus, at least like since I started becoming an illustrator, which is like not that long ago. I started <laughs> doing this in like 2015, 2016. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. Yeah. I was going to say too, I'm like, you're so young and you're, I, you, you're so accomplished. You. You're at like number one on these lists. It's so cool. <laughs> Thanks. But like I graduated from college and then I, I went into um, a position at a startup and started doing illustration and then I eventually moved into freelance. But since I've been active in this community, there has been such a focus on amplifying voices of women of color. Yeah. And yeah, there's definitely a space for me here and there's a space for us here. And it's also interesting because like hearing from friends who did study in art school and study illustration, so many people that they, they had to study and learn from were white men. Mm -hmm. And because I like, I think because I'm self-taught and because I like entered this through social media and everything. Yeah. I'm really not even aware of these people. Mm, so like, yeah. I don't know this man. Sorry. <laughs> so in my world, like in my um, arts community, it is women and um, gender non-conforming people of color. And that's the art that I see and that I amplify and I learn from. And you really, I have to say, like, you're saying this and you're saying your beliefs and you really are doing this, like, with, with the collective books. Like, you are literally amplifying all of these things that are important and that mean something to you. And I just, I think that's such a beautiful, important thing. Because I think we all have ideals about, oh, how we want to see the world, but you're, like, actually doing it. If I can just nerd out for a second and say that I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, like, yeah. Going back to... Um public arts education so many of the kids who lack the uh like their schools okay. lack the funding or have chosen to not um invest in their arts education are black mm -hmm. and brown kids yeah kids from lower income communities mm -hmm. and these are the kids who we need to hear their stories from them their stories cannot be told by white people white men yeah. white women you know, anymore. Like we need to hear stories from these people directly. And they also, these kids deserve to know that their voices can make a difference. Yeah. And that is why also they are being silenced. You know, yeah. it's not yeah. like um, arts education isn't funded just because people think that, you know, it's not a viable career opportunity. They also, like, you know, people in power, rich white men in power don't want to fund arts education because it's powerful because- yes kids who young people I stop calling them kids young people who are brilliant like have the ability to um evoke so much change and passion with artwork and with like knowing the power of their own voices and that's being silenced on purpose it's yeah. not like hmm, god hmm like it's not an accident like it's that's that's so well said. It's funny that that specifically hasn't um, come up yet, uh, not, not with you, but just in general in our chats. That's so, it's such a good point is, is not only is arts education and arts important and viable, but it is literally powerful. I mean, like the artists in our lives, whether it's artists like that you think of like with painting or illustrating or, or filmmakers or, or whatever a version of art, like that, it, that inspires our lives so much. Um, like you see a movie and you're like, oh, I can do that. Or I can be like that superhero, uh, which is why it's important to have representation in movies. Um, and it's, it's, I know this is such a silly example, but like, um, I remember seeing like Wonder Woman and seeing all these women fighting and the idea of like being, I always thought about exercising to be like, you know, in shape and blah, 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 but never to be actually strong because that was never like shown to me. It's like, I'm a girl, I don't need to be strong. Mm. And um, I remember seeing Wonder Woman and being like, oh my God, I know it's so nerdy. I was like crying in the theater watching them fight. So I was like, yes, women don't just have to be hot. Like they could be like strong and actually be able to lift up strong things and like do things. Mm -hmm. And in terms of like with art and having teachers or um, principals or artists themselves, like, yes, there needs to be more people of color and more women and people with different identities because you really, being able to see the thing 
is makes you feel like I can do that too. Like my silly Wonder Woman thing. Like I know that's all also that Wonder Woman's not real. And I've told myself that. Um, but seeing these like strong, badass women, you know, with swords and stuff, I'm like, I should do that. I literally just bought a, 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 a yeah, fake practice training. So really? it's sitting over there right now. I would love to do that. Honestly, I mean, I, I really need to work on my upper body strength because I mean, I, I want to be able to fight. <laughs> yeah, me, me too. I have like, I have like practice knives. This is also for research for a role that I did, but I started getting into it more because I was like, why can't girls be strong too. Mm -hmm. And and with art, like you need to be able to say you're not just white male artists, you had like kids, young people, I mean, even even older people who never thought they could do art need to be able to be like, Oh, that person looks like me in mm -hmm. some way or another. And like, I can do it too. And, and it really makes a difference. And I'm not saying this to you. I'm saying this to other people because you're <laughs> obviously saying this. Um, but and, and you you did an art installation last year the uh, the the we rise the we rise installation 2019 and uh, I have a picture of it. What was that? I said was that last year? I have like no concept of time anymore. It feels like ten thousand years ago. Oh, I have absolutely no. I just checked an email that I didn't respond to, and it was from like a month ago. And I was like, oh, I thought that was like two days old. Whoops. But that might be my own issue. <laughs> maybe, I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't blame that on time. Um, but uh, you did this beautiful art installation. And um, what made me think about it is earlier, you said something about like, you're allowed to take up space and people aren't told like this, there's space in this planet for you too. And it's not just for, you know, this one idea of a person. And so it says you deserve to take up space. And then you're, it, there's this very cute picture of you in front of it. But um, I'm gonna try to. <laughs> Let me try to get this on my screen for people to see. So this is the top half of it. I hope I hope you can see it on my screen. My I couldn't sort of fall in. There's your leg, and then, then your other leg. <laughs> um, but I love this so much. Um, Thank you. And and I love that the focal point is about is about taking up space um, because you know people cer certain people more than others are taught so much in this world that you 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 don't deserve to be here and you don't deserve to take up space and whether it's physically or in a field or um, whatever it is, what, uh, so were you commissioned to do this piece? How, how did this, I really, really love this. Um, how did this come about? Um, well, I've worked with We Rise before and my good friend, um, and I want to call her my mentor. She's my friend tour. Um, oh, that's cute. Did you make that word up? No, I didn't. I okay, don't cool. Word. That's okay. I, I love it. <laughs> All my friends are friends of ours. I love um, it. But uh, my friend Kate was doing art direction um, for We Rise. Oh, awesome. She is just someone who always encourages me to, like, really stretch the boundaries of what I'm working on. And the year before, she had convinced me to do another, like, because that, that is, like, a three-dimensional piece. It's, like, coming out of the walls. Oh, and Yeah wood and I had never worked like that before cool. and the year prior to that so 2018 she convinced me to do our, my first one of that and then this year uh, last year what's well, time I don't know <laughs> again it's fine <laughs> in, in that installation she was like I want you to do a whole wall I want you I think you can do it like you can just just do it we'll, we'll help you with everything that you need and um so she really helped to facilitate that that's awesome. That's awesome. That's but um, she was basically her directive was like, this is for you to take up space. <laughs> yeah, and literally. So it was really just me wanting to communicate to everyone who walks through the space that, you know, if you are someone who's been told in your life that you should shrink or be small or quiet your voice or quiet your body and your presence, like this is your reminder to be expansive and to really like take up all the space that you deserve. So often women and um, gender nonconforming people of color are told and maybe not even told, but like pressured in other ways subconsciously through yeah. microaggressions and all these things that like we should be small or should not ask for more. And yes. this is just a reminder to like be expansive with every part of yourself, like what you say, you know, with your body. Yeah. Just be. I love that. I need to, and I know I'm like, I'm a white woman um, saying this, so I can't even, uh, I can't even imagine how could I, um, other people's experiences 
Um, but even being a woman who is white, I, I have such imposter syndrome um, so much. And I'd, sometimes when I think back to, even though I, I've had a lot of support and love in my life, um, by a lot of wonderful people, um, especially now going to like therapy and stuff and working out things in my head. I'm like, wait, why does my mind go to this place first? Mm -hmm. And then I look back and I'm like, it's not always just words. Like you said, it's not always obvious. Like a person would be like, oh, I, I didn't tell you you couldn't do that. I told you you mm -hmm. could do that. Mm -hmm. But it's like, no, I'm, there's more to it than that. And it is microaggressions and it is society as a whole. And it's so much more than that. And so like, I'm personally like kind of working through uh, myself as I'm like, oh God, as a, as a female in this culture growing up and, and I'm white. So I, I already like, I already have this part of me that society's like, you know, good for you. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm aware of that. And I still, I'm like, I have such imposter syndrome all the time. I have such like issues with taking up space. I've even had friends of mine say to me like, Britt, you belong here. Why are you acting like you're not a part of this group? And it wasn't until a friend of mine said that to me a few years ago that I realized that I do that a lot. Um, not with every group, but a lot of times I do that, especially if I'm nervous, especially if I'm with people that I'm like, don't know very well and look up to it. And I do that. And um, yeah, like, why don't, why do we, why do I, why do you, why does anyone else not deserve to take up space in this world? And um, I just really, I really love this piece. That's why I have it up on my computer. I've just been looking at it all morning. And um, yeah, it's such, and, and someone I just remembered just commented something really lovely in the chat. They said, art equals culture, um, who are the gate people, God, my phone, my phone's broken. So I can only, I do this every single time. I can only read part of the message. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> art equals culture, who are the gatekeepers of culture. Can't let white men control uh, the, I think it says the space. I might've missed something. Space. Thank you. Control the art space. It's so true though. Art does equal culture. Um, and yes, the people who are in charge of the art are in charge of the culture and that needs to change. And I feel like it is starting to change, um, but it's obviously still not enough. And um, it's also but, it's so important to see what young people can create and want to say and want to communicate, especially in this time, you know, what are what are messages that they want to convey to the larger community? Yeah. about their own experience in their own communities. And like um, some friends and I, we were starting this art project, which has been delayed because of COVID. Yeah. Uh, but we were working with a school in Whittier. My friend mm. Ronica is from there and connected with um, a middle school teacher there because their arts programming had been completely cut and they didn't have mm. art classes anymore. Oh. Um, but they have all this like blank space around the school. So they came up with the idea, like, let's do a mural project and involve the kids and see who would want to, like, work on it with us. So it's me and then um, two friends. And so we went for our first meeting and it was like a totally, like, optional meeting, right? Like, the kids did not have to come, but yeah. the library was packed for two Oh, seconds. wow. Of kids, kids want this. Who wanted to work on this mural project to learn more about being an artist these are middle school kids too, right? So it's like, yeah, middle school, you're like the most dispassionate and like, oh, yeah. But sure. that's, that's what you think. But like, these kids were amazing. And that's like, amazing. they just wanted to learn more about what it's like to be an artist, like how they can get involved with telling their stories in their school. And, you know, you, you know, that there is this hunger out there for art education, for art classes. It looks like your dog. My, my dog just got home. <laughs> Um, um, but just imagine this is one school and like yeah. thousands of schools are there across um, California who don't have access to this. And these kids are being silenced because their districts, you know, our city council members aren't choosing to fund what is a basic necessity of education. Absolutely. Yeah, that's such a good point. You do you think of um, middle school students as the most dispassionate group of individuals. And so that's such a good example that they're not like they crave this. I mean, that's when I became a professional actor was when I was middle school age, actually. And I and I love that, like how full it was and how many kids just like want it and and really need it. Um, and that's so great that you did that, um, by the way. You live in California now, I'm assuming. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay, okay, cool, cool, same, yeah. Um, you could, you, it's so funny doing these. I'm like, I'm talking to people and sometimes I figure out they live like a mile down the road. Where are you? Like, oh, I'm in Burbank. 
Okay, I'm more south. I, I just moved from Echo Park to Rampart Village, which I asked, it's like, I don't know if that's a real name, but I guess- Wait, what's it called again? Rampart Village. I don't oh, know right. what, it's like a gentrification name where it's real, so I've just- I haven't heard of it. It's, it's right above Koreatown. Okay, cool, I know where that is. That's cool, I love that area. Yeah. <laughs> that um, I definitely know. Yeah, and I think also it's important to say, like, especially right now, um, while we're talking about police brutality and mm -hmm. um, all of the white supremacist violence against black and brown bodies, yeah. that we have the opportunity to defund school police and to abolish school police mm -hmm. in favor of, you know, like loving programming for kids. Yes. For exactly. children. children deserve arts education, mm -hmm. not to be criminalized in their own schools. Exactly. And I think like this conversation is inextricably linked to that defunding the police and abolishing the police conversation. Absolutely. Because right now, um, I think LAUSD spends, you know, like a hundred million dollars. I need to look this up. I don't know facts. No, no. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they're spending millions and millions of dollars on criminalizing young kids of color. Mm hmm when they could be investing that into arts education. Absolutely. Yeah, so and that's just- Priorities, and it's not like the money isn't there. It's there, it just oh. needs to be reallocated. The money, yeah, the money is there. And again, I also, with this, I don't know the exact numbers, but I was just looking at a graph the other day of um, just the, uh, the, the budget for Los Angeles as a county in general. And the budget for LAPD is, is, I mean, astronomically higher than anything else. And so I can only imagine um, how it is, it is echoed in the school, the school budget. And then in addition to like criminalizing young kids is in addition to not giving them an arts education, not having the education part of it be um, equitable to other districts and stuff. They're also now getting things put on their record that is further going to disservice them in the future. And so it's like, it's, it, they're equally taking things away from them and putting things on them that are going to make their futures that much more difficult um, to even like start the race even close to other kids in uh, richer districts um, in general, because it's, you know, it comes down to money a lot in these districts and where they choose to put it. And uh, yeah, that's an excellent point about the, um, about having law enforcement in schools. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And if people who are watching this, or you want to learn more, um, yeah. Youth Justice Coalition. Um, what is it again? Youth Justice Coalition. I'm going to write it in the comments. Yeah, um, YGC does a lot of amazing work. They're really like at the forefront of um, abolishing school police. And with uh, other youth-led organizations, they actually got LAUSD to cut the police budget by 25%, I believe. Oh, wow. 25 or 35%. But, you know, we want to get to 100. Yeah, absolutely. But that's amazing that they're, yeah. they're doing uh, such incredible work already. Yeah. So it's, it's also just like amazing to see their leadership. And they're also very arts forward. And it's all led by um, kids who've been impacted by the system. Like, yeah, people have been impacted by the system, and they're amazing. And they're, I know they're also having like a day of action right now um, for AB1007, which is also to um, take money away from probations and reinvesting it into communities and programs that will benefit kids of color. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, so Youth Justice Coalition, I put it in the comments mm -hmm. um, for those who, of you who are watching, and I'm also going to look it up myself uh, when we sign off. Um, but that's amazing. And that all, I mean, it all, it all comes together. It's, it's all like wants the same um, thing. And it's really important. I just said that. It, I just said that so stupidly. Um, but you know what I meant? It's Friday. It's been like a oh. Every week's been a weird, long week. <laughs> this has been an extra weird week for me. I have a literature degree, and I'm like, what's a sentence? I should be able yeah, to do this. you, like, read and say things for work. <laughs> and I literally read and say things for work in addition to where, what I went to college to do. Um, I know it's because I'm not reading anything. I'm, like, having my own original thoughts. What? Actress? <laughs> oh, also, I do need to say I love The Magicians. Oh, cool. Thanks. Oh, I'm so glad you've seen it. <laughs> yeah, I'm a nerd. Okay, <laughs> I cool. Love magic. I Me love too. magic so much. But that also ties into this conversation about like being able to dream and imagine. And so much of what I do is like drawing the things that I want to see into the world. And all kids should have that opportunity. To oh, yeah. Be able to dream and to be able to have 
the skills to like help them tell these stories. Exactly, exactly, yeah. You know, when I first was on, got on The Magicians, I was so excited because like I've always loved fantasy and magic and like Disney, well, I'm, you know, I'm wearing my Hercules shirt right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, Meg what's from, that? I love Meg from Hercules. Oh, me too. I love Meg so much. She's so yeah. cool. Where is she? There she is. There she is. <laughs> like a little kid with my t-shirt. I've been wearing like so many Disney shirts during quarantine because they make me mm -hmm. happy and I'm like, whatever, I'm just gonna- Oh my God, this is like the first time I've worn pants in quite a while. Oh yeah, I, uh, I put on jeans a month ago, I think for the first time and it was a very bizarre experience. <laughs> Not used to it. Um, actually, the, the knives that I have are because of the magicians because That's I was training. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. I didn't want to distract from the train of thought, but um, yeah. Yeah, I just realized I was like for work, but yeah, like I have like all these knives that I like practice with all, like my dog actually got to this one, but that's why I have the knives. And then um, again, fake, fake knives, they're safe. I, I feel like people see me flipping them like, oh my God. That's good. They are not real though. Thanks. <laughs> um, God, now I feel like I could just chat and hang out with you and I, I don't want to, oh my gosh, I, I've, I've had your time for so long. Um, but again, th thank you for joining us before I start going off on another tangent with you because I'm having so much fun chatting with you. Um, <laughs> uh, again, everyone who's watching, um, go to createca.org to sign the pledge um, for arts education in school and equitable arts education in school. We can. A this is taking real action um, that we can actually make a change for California schools, which is incredibly important and um and and Ashley thank you so much for chatting with me was there anything else that, that I missed that you wanted to, to, to say about like um your art or just what you want to put out in the world sorry I know it's like such an annoying last question I just wanted to I'm not just miss gonna anything. say abolish the police I'm just gonna end everything that I ever say with that about yeah, yeah. The also have a wonderful day thank you for having me <laughs> Yeah, thank you. That was so fun. And I'm gonna go look at more of your art. And and oh, and everyone follow Ashley on um, on on Instagram. It's Ashley Luca Draws, right? Ash Luca Draws. Ash Luca Draws. It's just not my day, so is it? Close. But you know, yeah, it's it's a hard time right now. For You're being too awesome. forgiving. I literally had you literally speak some Russian, and I still couldn't get the name right. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's okay. My name's been mispronounced my whole life, so. I know, but that doesn't mean it should continue to be mispronounced. And I'm sorry that I continued that. Luka, Lukashevsky. <laughs> Ashley Lukashevsky. Lukashevsky. Yes. That's Very correct. good. Okay, thank you. I had to end it correctly. We got there together. We started uh, here, but then we really... Teamwork. When women come together, they can <laughs> say one person's name right. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you again so much, Ashley. This has thank been you. so wonderful. Thank you for all your art. And congr congrats again on Anti-Racist Baby. Um, that's so amazing. Thank Everyone you. go out and get that book. I'm going to tweet about it, actually. And uh, yeah, have a wonderful Friday and weekend. Thank you, you too. So nice to meet you. Thanks, you too. Bye. Bye.